This is the first one I'm going to do. It's a classic circular arrangements one, and it's got some conditions to it. So that's why it's worth having a look at. And I, um, I want you to see the way. I want to try and model for you the way I think about it, and um, and also set up my working. Okay. Um, I can guarantee, as I go through this, you'll be like, really, I have to do that much working? And my answer to you for that question is the same as my answer always is, uh, you can get away with less working, but I don't rate your chance of success at getting the right answer as very high if you do significantly less, okay? So, if you um, can pull back to exercise 10i, or if you're in it, already in it at the moment, question 11, bit of a way through, let's have a look at it together. And you can see this is my summary, and we'll talk through how the summary is, what the question is. A sports committee consisting of four rowers, three basketballers, and two cricketers sits at a circular table. How many different arrangements of the committee are possible if the rowers and basketballers both sit together in groups, so all the rowers together, all the basketballers together as separate groups, and... No rower sits next to a basketball. So they're in groups, right? But I want the groups to be separated from each other. Does that make sense? Rowers, basketballers, they're a group, but they can't actually be adjacent, okay? So here's the setup. Those are all of the conditions. Let's have a think about this. Now, being that you've got, step one, rowers and basketballers in groups, Okay. I'm going to think of each of them as their own object, and then I'll work out what's happening inside the object later on. Okay, So that means I've got, around the table, I've got one object, two objects, three, four. Does that make sense? Four objects to place. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, having got that in my head, is I'm going to draw myself a circular table, and there are going to be one, two, three, four positions around the table. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay, four positions, four things to put in those positions. And then I start to think about the conditions that I've been given, okay? So for starters, the rollers and basketballers, they're in groups, okay? Now remember, it's around a circular table. So at the moment, let's imagine the group of rollers, they're walking up, and everything looks the same at the moment, right? That group can sit in any of those spots and it's, it's all identical, okay? So let's fix the rowers in a position. Okay. So I'm going to, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, right? I'm going to fix them up here, okay? So I'm actually going to write, fix the rowers in position. Okay. Now I can start thinking about arrangements, but the conditions are still playing out in my head, okay? I notice that if another group comes along, for example, say the basketballers, right? How many options in those four... Um, spots can they go into? The, the basketballers. Yeah. There's only one spot they can go in, right? Because this option's out, this option's out, because they can't sit next. So therefore, the basketballers have to be here. Does that make sense? Hmm. So, so far, I only have one arrangement, right? Because remember, the rowers all look the same, so I just locked them in spot. Uh, the basketballers have to sit here, right? So I'm going to say, only one position for the basketballers. Full stop. Okay. And then lastly, I've got two final people to place, right? They're the cricketers. Do they have to sit in either of those spots? Like, does one cricketer come along, right, the first cricketer, and say, I have to sit here or I have to sit there? He doesn't, right? He can sit in one of two positions. So another way I can think about that is I've got two boxes and I can fill them with either of the cricketers and they don't mind. Does that make sense? So I've got a cricketer here, I've got a cricketer here. There are two factorial ways to place the cricketers. Does that make sense? I normally would have had three factorial because it's around a circle, four objects, but because of the conditions, it's only two factorial. Those are really only the guys I'm placing, okay? So there are two factorial ways to seat the cricketers. Okay, lovely. So I have all of the objects around the table. What's left to consider? Okay, so I've um, I've done this. Tick, right? I've done, I've placed the actual, you know, rowers and basketballers, but I haven't dealt with the actual groups themselves because they can shuffle around within the groups and that will be different arrangements. Okay, so um, how many rows are there again? Three. Oh. 
four rowers, okay? So the rowers can rearrange themselves, so they're their own little arrangement. And remember, look, they're placed now, right? So that's going to be one, two, three, four spots. So how many ways? Four factorial one. Okay. For the basketballers, how many basketballers? Three, so three factorial ways. Have I accounted for everything in the question? Look carefully. All the people are in a spot. The groups have been sorted, the conditions have been met, looks good. So the lovely thing about this is you can see, and sometimes I even do this with another color, right? One, two factorial, four factorial, three factorial. All the numbers I need are there, right? So now I'm going to say total ways equals um, one, two factorial, four factorial, three factorial. Yeah? Someone got a number for me? Two, four, two, eight. 288. Lovely. Okay. So this is not complicated if you think about it in a logical way. Now, like I said, could you get away with writing less? Yes, you could. If you wrote this and this alone, there's a very good chance you'd get full marks. Okay. However, like what kinds of errors or problems do you think you're opening yourself up to if you go straight here? Any suggestions? Like you could... You could write 3 factorial because the circle without. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of 1 times 2 factorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so this 3 factorial, right? We know where it comes from because we've written this down. But someone could have seen, oh, um, I'm around a circle and I've got four things to do. And then they just write down 3 factorial. They haven't actually taken care of all of the conditions and that kind of thing. This is much clearer. You can see I understand because I've written all that and my diagram makes sense. Okay? Uh, and also, I didn't miss any things. When people write this kind of thing out and they just go straight here, they'll, like, they'll just forget something because they haven't laid out everything and checked mentally. There's nothing to check against. Have I accounted for everything? Because it's all up here. Okay? So that's part A. That's the easy bit. Now comes the um, probability part. So have a look at what it's asking now. One rower and one cricketer are related. Uh, given these conditions, what's the probability that these two members of the committee will sit next to each other? So here's part B. Okay, so luckily for me, everything that I've already done still applies, and now I just want to add an extra layer to it. Okay, so, uh, where's that blue going? That's interesting. All right, so we'll go with this. Now, have a look at my setup. Have a look at my setup. Um, I've got the four objects placed around the table. It's the rower and the cricketer who are related. Okay, the rower and the cricketer. Okay, so where could one of the cricketers sit? Well, for instance, they could sit over here. Here's a spot for one of the cricketers to sit. Now, if this is where the cricket is sitting, I now have an additional condition that the rowers have to sit in, right? Where's the related one going to be? They have to be here, right? Remember, there's um, four rowers, right? There's four rowers, and this cricketer, sorry, this rower has to be here, otherwise he won't meet the condition that we've just added, right? Are there any other things that need to apply? That's it, right? So look back at what we've done, right? Some of this is relevant and some of it is not, okay? Uh, is this still relevant? Yes. Yep, still good. I have, to, I have to get someone seated first. It didn't have to be the rowers, but it could be anyone. Is this still relevant? Yes, the basketball is still stuck. How about this one? No. Ah, so I locked someone in position, right? So I'm going to forget about this one for a second. What about this one? Ah, it's different now, isn't it? Because I locked one of the rowers in position. So now there's only three spots for the other rowers to rearrange themselves, right? So for, I've already said, okay, this is only one. This is going to be three factorial, right? What about this one? Is this one still relevant? Yeah, yeah it is, isn't it? They're, they're still good, right? Okay, I'm not finished yet. Right? Remember where I started we was to lock this guy in position, right? But clearly this is not the only place the cricketer can sit, yeah? He can sit over here. So if I put him, uh, noughts and crosses, let's put him here instead, okay? Now where is his, um, what was it? Are they brothers or something? They're just related, okay? Where's the other cricketer going to go? Has to be here, okay? Now you can see, just by the symmetry of how I've drawn this, the number of ways to arrange the noughts arrangement is exactly the same as the number of ways to do the crosses arrangement, yeah? 
I've already worked that out. So I can say the total weight going to be equal to uh, one position for the basketballers, one position for the cricketer once I've locked him in, three factorial ways for the remaining rowers, three factorial ways for the basketballers who don't give a rip in this particular set of conditions, and those cricketers can actually swap places, and that's fine. Okay. Hmm. Now, just having a look at this, you can actually go ahead and you can work out. I think this is going to be, that's 6 times 6, which is 36. That's 72. Looks like it's a quarter of this, right? So it's 72. So therefore, the probability is, which is a quarter. 